Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think you actually, if you pay attention to that video, you see some of those changes in mechanics, the dog being one of them, right. uh, underwater combat being another. It actually, if you, if you really break it down, what we wanted to do when we set out with this game was uh, we felt very comfortable that we had put uh, Modern Warfare done. We, we finished it, put a bow on it, finished that arc, you know, uh, the trilogy, um, and we wanted to come up with a new, uh, a new uh, experience. So what we did is, is we set out, it was kind of a long road of trying to figure out what exactly we wanted to do story-wise and what we wanted to, and what, how we wanted to play out for the player. And we kind of came across a number of things and, you know, we came across this idea of, of a mass event that changes the world and, uh, and what it would be like to play in this sort of post-apocalyptic type of atmosphere. Uh, and then we also played with um, the idea of what it would be like to go up against a superpower. So instead of being the superpower, you're now the, the, not the superpower, and you're going up against the more technologically superior superpower. So uh, what that allowed us to do, basically, is create new sort of um, gameplay experiences based on that, that sort of information. So you, you aren't the big army storming the beaches. You know, you're getting stormed. You're, you're, you're playing sort of the other side of some of what you've done in the past. So I think... Just from, and it's not a, te it's not tech based necessarily. This isn't really right. tech changing our gameplay because I don't, I feel like, as a studio, we've never felt like we've been held back on gameplay by tech. Um, you know, visually we've been held back, but not gameplay wise. Gameplay is always something we felt very strongly about and trying to introduce new situations for the player to be in. Uh, and so, <clears throat> one of the great things about this new story that we that we found after after kind of coming to it is we get to put the player in these new situations they've not seen before. They don't feel this, they don't have that same feeling of, you know, superior technology, superior force, and they get to be sort of the underdog. Um, I think that's going to, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be subtle, I think, in some ways, but I think for those people who really kind of look at storytelling as a craft and as an art form, um, I'm hoping that that's, they're going to be really appreciative of that. Yeah. Like. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that, that's the, the kind of the great thing about the new engine is we've actually designed it now so that it scales differently than our previous engine. Um, so uh, there's, there's really a lot to this and I could keep going for hours. But um, one of, and I kind of, I alluded it to in my presentation is that we brought in these new, these new artists, these CG film guys, not game artists. And, and they really kind of changed our pipeline around a lot. One of the cool things they did was, is instead of creating assets where in the past it was, well, we create this one asset that has a polycot budget of this and a texture size budget of that, and it fits on all platforms. And it's, you know, looks good and everywhere, but it's not specific to any specific platform. It just kind of, it works everywhere. So what we've done now, the new pipeline that these guys brought with them is, let's do all of our art and, and you know, characters, weapons, all that kind of stuff, let's do it at cinema quality. That's beyond next, next, next gen, it's beyond PC. Let's do it all at this super high res cinematic quality, something you'd put in a movie. And then what we can do is we can pull from that, we can pull down into uh, each platform. So it allows us to make each platform look the best as it possibly can instead of sort of using an average of that pre-made asset. Uh, we will have current gen. And actually the cool thing is, is the new engine that we created is for everything. It's not just next gen. So the current gen is going to get a cool boost out of, um, out of the new tech. Uh, there will just be some very specific features like the sub-D and, and, the, and the displacement mapping that's only next-gen and PC. No. Um, the, the, so there's, there's really multiple parts of that because there's different, there's different parts of uh, the game that do different things. It's, it's, um, it's not as simple as aiming. You know, it's not one thing to aim. It's a lot of things to aim. So the art now, we've kind of moved into that realm of it's aimed so far above PC and console that you know it's just it covers everything so there's no porting anymore really and then uh, one of the things cool that actually we developed a long time ago uh, you know I started back on COD 2 and uh, one of the things that we developed in our engine at that time was this idea that we're platform agnostic 
Now, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people who argue that, but what they don't understand is, yes, the art assets were made sort of in this, it was, the art assets were made agnostically in the sense that they worked everywhere, right? right? So, um, and the engine was done the same way. The, the engine was made so that the, the content developers are creating content, whether it's scripting levels or making art, they're doing it separately from uh, any particular console. So our devs, actually, you'll see, you go in a room and there's a dev, he's using some Xbox 360 to be his sort of prime platform of where he's just sort of gauging his work. Now when he checks in his work, he has to, ch he has to check it on every single platform. So he's not just checking in on one and then we eventually port. He's writing it for every platform as he goes. But the guy next to him, he might be using PC as his primary platform for checking it. So it doesn't really matter which platform they're using as their sort of test bed. Uh, they have to cover all of the platforms. Okay. So it makes our development a little slower, but I think it, it takes away that idea that the game is actually a port. Our lead single player designer is absolutely, he's a hardcore PC guy. You know, that's all he plays and that's all he, do, he, you know, that's what he, like I said, when I said someone's on PC looking at the game, he's always on PC. Uh, and he, we keep talking, we have to put mod tools back in, have to put mod tools back in. Uh, the, the main, the main holdup isn't anything other than time. Yeah. It takes, it takes our guys, it honestly, for COD 4, it took a guy, um, a, I think it was, it was basically a designer and a coder, uh, f mixed up, but f four to five, maybe six months of work just by themselves, just doing that. And if you remember COD 4, they didn't come out when we launched, they came out afterwards. Right. It's just so much investment of time. I think it's still valuable. I think it's really valuable because, I mean, first off, you're, you're encouraging the community to, to partake in the game more, uh, but also, you know, kind of a selfish reason is a great way to find great talent right. <laughs> so uh it works for everybody it's a win-win for everybody it's sure. just that time is 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 a challenge and so we've worked with writers before you know a hollywood writer and you sure, yeah. create a contract and you're like okay you have to work four weeks out of the year and two pickup days and you know and they come in for their hours and they they get into the story when they're there and but then they go off and they do movies and stuff and uh gagan's been different Gagan's been really, really invested in this. He is way over what we put in any contract, for sure. Right. Uh, he is at the office every day. He has his own office. Uh, he comes in, uh, he stays, he eats dinner with us. He uh, plays ping pong. I mean, he's a part of the team and is there every day. And he sits there in the level reviews, gameplay reviews, he's there all the time. Um, and I, uh, honest, honestly, I have not seen that in my career, uh, that kind of dedication from a, an outside person. If I could ask, mm -hmm. his, his style, uh, you know, speaking specific, thinking specifically of Syriana and yeah. traffic. I, Roger Ebert called it hyperlink cinema. You know, like the whole thing where it's just like, he's like, click there, click there, and it goes back and forth, kind of like on Wikipedia. Uh, it, can you describe how that. that, like his aesthetic, yeah, yeah. is has affected the creation of the story and the way the players will experience this game? Um, that's a tough one because uh, he's not writing it in a vacuum, yeah. so he's not writing it alone. He's writing it alongside our, our team. We have some our, sort of our internal sure. guys we're running as well. Um, so I think we've affected each other. Uh, I think the really great part of it is he's, he's really helped us focus in on the player and the player's emotions. So I feel like that's something that maybe we haven't really played before. And, and, um, and again, maybe I'm, it's, maybe I'm getting a little too cerebral here about it, but I really feel that, um, uh, you know, again, we, we introduced this idea that the world is a character and that the character, what a character means in a story is something that has an emotional impact on, a, on another character, right? I mean, if it's, if it's a fanciful world, that's really cool and it's visually interesting and it takes you and brings you into the world. But if it doesn't affect the characters of that world emotionally and have and be a part of that emotional ride and that emotional experience, then it's not really a character. It's it's something else. It's just backdrop. And we focus. And, he, and this is all him kind of helping us in this. Is he helped us focus in on this idea that this the world is going to be a character and he's going to it's going to have an emotional impact and effect on the players, and uh, and on the characters that you're playing with. 
and he really wanted to get, uh, I think one thing I actually, sorry, back up a little bit, one thing that we didn't mention was uh, the, uh, your, your brother is actually part of the squad with you. So, uh, you know, as we start off the prologue with um, you and your brother before this event, the event, you, you get to experience the event, and then we, we kind of go forward 10 to 15 years after you've grown up and grown through this event, this new changed world, um, and, and you're still fighting, you're fighting alongside each other. So there's, this is where that sort of idea that the that world now that you grew up in has had a material effect on who you are as a person before we've even started really so playing the, them. Not even the post-apocalypse, you're in the, apocalypse is the new normal. Yeah. That's all these kids have really known growing up. Yeah. I will say that, um, you know, that, that tech has helped us shape, has helped, uh, has helped open some doors that we wouldn't have gone through before. So the underwater level, I'm just going to use that as an example because you've seen it already and so it makes it an easy example, is we probably wouldn't have done that level in the previous engine because uh, we wouldn't have felt like we could have made that environment as, as lush and beautiful as it is. And the great thing is, is the new engine actually will make that look really great on current gen as well, but of course next gen even further. Um, I don't think we would, we've done underwater before, but never like the whole level and combat and really sort of a ton of different visual, uh, I wish you could see more of the level, but there's a ton of like visual changes in within the level we never would have been able to do before. So I think uh, the tech did open some doors um, from uh, uh, what we have to offer the player as an experience. Um, I don't think, like I said before, I think, I don't feel like we've ever been held back by tech for gameplay. So I don't feel like there's a new gameplay aspect that we couldn't do. I just feel like it's taking us to places and locations that we've not been before.